So thank you everyone for joining this session. Today, uh, let me introduce myself first. My name is Ritesh and uh, I have total of uh, 11 years of experience in software industry. <clears throat> in 11 years experience, I have worked with multiple organizations. So I have worked with India Bulls, I have worked with TCS, I have worked with multiple organizations for different time frame. So my core area strength is uh, AWS. I have worked with around six years and two years I'm work, worked with uh, uh, Microsoft Azure framework. And uh, from last six months, I am leading a team of uh, Google Cloud as well. So in short, I have worked on basically all the three cloud vendors, which is very, very popular in the market. So coming back to the, uh, which one is the good in the market? The answer would be definitely AWS because this is something AWS was first in the market, which designed for the cloud services like EC2 was one of the prior service, initial service, I would say. And S3 was the basically for the storage purpose. So if you see jobs available in the industry, for automation, for AWS solution architect developers, jobs are as compared to Azure and Google Cloud as compared to, uh, to other cloud vendors in AWS jobs are more. So that is why the point is, number one thing is AWS is very, very liable in the market. Second is AWS very good control over the market. So I would say more than 60% of market is expecting on the AWS not only on microsoft like uh, other java products but even with the microsoft people are preferring aws because if i talk about aws it is giving very very user friendly interface i am not denying on the fact that the companies are doing very excellent job from last 5 to 10 years azure is also grasping the market but my point is here you have the great opportunities as compared to Azure, as compared to Google, as compared to Alibaba or whatever cloud you are working on. So coming back to the very, very basics of cloud, cloud computing, what is cloud computing? So I want this session to be very, very interactive. So please unmute yourself and try to engage this session. Just give me a moment. Yeah, anyone. What is cloud computing? Why it is getting popular? Why companies are moving to the cloud nowadays? If you go for any company interview, any interview, they will ask you very, very simple question. What is cloud computing? And how you are, why companies are moving on the cloud computing? Anyone want to answer this? We are it. I can answer one of the points. Today I'm working with one of the website. And I want to develop this website and host it to one of the server. Simple use case I am taking host to the server. Okay. What companies was doing before the cloud computing they were buying computer from one of the vendor and then do a lot of activities like web server setup, configuration changes, antivirus install, other management tools. Like they have to install so many things. So what was the process if I had to develop one of the website, if I'm talking about 2005 and 2010, how industry was working, suppose this is my website, and this is, I developed in React or Angular or .NET, or you can say Spring, basically Java, any of the language you can take, right? If you want to deploy this web application to server, what you will do? You will do one thing, you will 
this is let's suppose this is a user what this user will do user will go to market to the basically hardware company where they are making the computers or basically servers okay they will buy this server okay let's assume i bought this server then i will install softwares on that basically if you are working with dotnet application you will install ias then you will uh, do the configurations then you will install the antivirus right then along with these things you need to take care of the maintenance as well when i say maintenance it is something that antivirus patches window updates every will be taken care by the your cell phone only by your cell phone only so windows updates all you need to do but what happens when you go with the cloud computing these all things especially on the these parts like configuration maintenance windows updates all these things will be taken care by the cloud vendor itself when i say cloud vendor it is multiple vendors are available aws azure google cloud alibaba then you have ibm cloud oracle cloud Digital Ocean and many more. Multiple clouds are available, but what they are doing, they are doing all of these things. And trust me, apart from doing these changes, you have also to take care, like pooling activities. If you are taking this machine. from the vendor you will keep this machine somewhere in the office right for data center and keeping this machine then you will be installing ac then you will be keep guarding that machine from the external like nobody is giving harm to your machine you will acquire you will basically hire some of the agencies that will take care of your data centers but in case of cloud computing everything is done by this companies AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, Alibaba. These companies are doing their job. Now, coming back to the basics of AWS, if you see the documentation, it says cloud computing is defined as storing and accessing data and computing services over the internet. This simply says that please go to internet. This is AWS console, basic console. How I enter in that? using my account so if i get log out of out of it just let me sign out basically on this you can create your aws free account for one year okay when i say free and not each and every service is free but if you go with documentation and see aws free tier then you will see aws provide many services in free go to this documentation and free cloud computing services in the free tier free tier is account which is basically responsible of providing you free services for one year so what type of services you can see free trials 12 months free always free there are many services in aws which are always free but i will go with 12 months free as of now and see it says that you can use compute service when i say compute service it is a service that that is free for 750 hours in a month 750 hours in a month so what is amazon ec2 amazon ec2 is your machine when i say machine it is your web server anybody worked on the i want to know your background before going to uh, discuss on this topic can anybody explain you worked on website hosting and all 
I believe uh, all are working professional, right? Karthik, Mark, Sachin. Yes, I have the basic Mark. idea. Like. Sonal. Uh, actually, I have uh, taken one domain, but yeah, I did yeah, not right. host it. Uh, Rita Shabul him. Hello. Rita Shabul him. Um, this is Mark speaking. I have some experience in launching institute. Uh, like I have an experience on the most of the services on the on the console. So uh, uh, I have launched EC2 instances. Uh, I've tried to spin you know like a three tier application so yes but i just need an in-depth to polish up before starting okay. with interview yeah thank you and what about you sonal joy for me i only have theoretical knowledge like i'm not okay. so um, when i say virtual machine you know meaning of virtual machine and do you know meaning of website development i hope that you know right yes okay and when I say hosting of application that you already know, right? Yeah. What about you, Joy? Uh, yeah, uh, I have uh, some idea also. I can create uh, EC2 and uh, I know hosting also. Uh, I have some idea. Actually, I'm okay. working. Okay, yeah. got it. Point is, uh, don't just uh, keep idle on this session. Please ask questions. This is for you. If you see that I am not covering anything where you are feeling uncomfortable, please let me know. I will start explaining that thing to you. But uh, coming back to the free tier, AWS provides <clears throat> these services for 12 months as a free service. But you just need to one, uh, take a one point that says Amazon EC2 is free for 750 hours per month. That means if you go by calculation, we have 720 hours in a month. If we are calculating 30 days by month, then you have 720 hours per month. So in that case, you can open one EC2 machine for one month. And that practice you can do for 12 months. There will be no bill for that duration. That's how you need to calculate. But if you're saying, I need two machines, okay, two EC2 machines, AWS says you can still use two machines, three machines, but the ultimate point is 750 hours is the maximum point. Okay, you can do that thing if you are opening three instances, that compound, that entire amount should not greater than 750 hours. If it is extending by 750 hours, there will be a billing for that. So okay. I have a question for you. Yeah. yeah. So actually, I right now I have maybe seven uh, EC2. Yeah. And so uh, I don't understand how they calculate. Uh, they uh, just they give me bill actually. So they be giving already bill. So um, I suppose I have five uh, EC2. Uh -huh. So it's 750 hours month, how they calculate? If I have five, maybe five uh, EC2 is in my... Yeah, total should be like, like I said, if you go with this, if you opening like three instances, okay? But I'm opening this instance 10 hours in a day. This is eight hours in a day. This is four, <coughs> four hours in a day, okay? If you go with this, calculation there will be 300 for this okay and by 32 40 for this and 120 for this 300 plus 240 plus 120 it will become 540 plus 120 680 okay but the maximum you can use is 750 hours in free tier does it answer your question? Yeah, got it. Thank you. And one of the very beautiful thing they are giving, if you working as a solution architect or you're trying to working under the solution architect, 
always solution architect or enterprise architect will ask the question that whatever design you are giving did you make a calculation of it how much services we are going to use and what will be the every month cost for it okay so for that aws is giving you calculator basically aws calculator here you need to come and calculate the cost this pricing calculator go to this link it will ask you which service you want to calculate the cost so it is saying create estimate when i click on this create estimate it will ask you which service you want to create a bill or just want to have a estimate let's suppose you are working with different aws services in that case you will add multiple services in one estimate and that estimate link you can share with the client as well so let's suppose if multiple architects or multiple developers are working on one of the project in that case they can they can add multiple services in the same estimate let let me do for you i am just adding a code for ec2 okay i let what i'll do i'll just click on configure it will ask which name you want to give i am saying just my project name is pci or pic psc estimates okay in which region you want to calculate the cost <coughs> so i hope everyone is aware about region but let me explain in detail what is region aws says this is my region this is my let's suppose mumbai region okay in mumbai region they have three availability zones you can say data centers as well data center 1 this is your data center 2 this is your data center 3 aws says i will take care of your solution that if one data center is going down i will take your take care of your services and will fulfill your request let's suppose with the example if you are hosting one of the application web application but they do internally they will create a multiple copies on the same data center let's suppose this data center is in the location of uh, chennai let's suppose in india multiple cities one is mumbai that in mumbai is a region and data center 1 is inside the chennai location then we have data centers 2 which is at the different location let's suppose there is another location in india pune that that is being installed that entire data center is available on the pune site okay aws will never disclose the locations with you but that's how they internally work when i when they say region mumbai is a region but inside that they they have three data centers and when you are storing one of the website on aws infrastructure they will create a single multiple copies of your data inside the same data center let's suppose your machine is not working in this machine is not working by any chance this machine is not working they will route they will route their all traffic to the second machine in this same data center but there can be a chances entire data center is down just take the example of ukraine and russia war <coughs> one city is highly impacted entire city is break down now so that entire data center is not working in that case they have enabled all load balancer activities in the background they will move all your traffic to the different region or different availability zone which is second data center pune now by any chance that data center is also down still you have the options to work with data center third and let's suppose 
India is impacted by all the activities. So let's suppose the entire India data center sit down. In that case, AWS says go with the multilingual. Then in that case, you have another option to create like Northern Virginia. Okay, same setup they have in the different zone as well. Now again, three copies they have. Data center one, data center two, data center three. This is very, very basic thing. But when you actually start making applications on AWS, this is the very fundamental thing you need to take care. Because uh, now that is, yeah, sorry. So uh, my question is, uh, you said one availability zone. You said yeah. Mumbai, India, one availability zone. No, so, Mumbai is a region. Inside that, these are the availability zone. DS1, DS2, DS3. So, <coughs> if we, as for example, I create a batch, uh, sorry, EC2. So, mm -hmm. if I create EC2 in uh, Mumbai, Mumbai, uh, can I say it's Mumbai availability zone or no? No, Mumbai is not availability zone. When you go to AWS services, mm -hmm. here you see, if you go to the AWS, here you see, let me enter into the console so that you can understand better with the example. Let me log in through the root user as of now. I'm using my credentials to log in. Four, six, four, X. this this is your region list if you go enter in AWS you will see all the regions here okay US is Northern Virginia US East Ohio US West North California US West Oregon but if you go with Asia Pacific Mumbai this is your region and inside it they have three availability zones when I say availability zone, this is equivalent to data center. Got it. Got it. Yeah, this was my question. Actually, yeah. how so to... I have one question. I, I have one question. Yeah, please. My, my question is like uh, in every every zone, so how many data center is available? So no. it's how many data every zone, how many data centers are available? That is that is AWS is not will share with you basically my point is as per the cloud standards this is the standard if you are making one region there should be at least two availability zone but there can be multiple data center for it let's suppose in mumbai mumbai is one of the reason right but in pune they can have multiple data centers but it will be considered only one availability zone inside availability zone they can have multiple data centers all are attached to one layer got it good yeah thank you uh, Ritesh, i have one question yeah you, your voice is a bit low i don't know now yeah better okay so if uh, suppose i start my project today and i want to host a website in uh, india so i will select uh, mumbai region right because it is close to me right so uh, what is this another region suppose if india is down so how would i uh, select this northern virginia like no, i this... need to select it or this is provided by aws no when you will design your service in every aws service you need to make certain changes let's suppose i'm just uh, giving one of the example that i am creating one of the application let me just remove it i am making one application and that application name is Facebook. Simple example. Okay. So now you will ask one question in which area should I 
uh, host this application because there are multiple users. Users are from the US, users are from the India, every location is coming, right? right? So there will be a load balancer in front of it. And that load balancer will decide where to go. So your services will be deployed on India as well. Your service just will be deployed on the US as well. Every area your services will be deployed, multiple regions, but it will track. Once your user is coming from India, it will go to the India location server. Okay. And once user is coming from the US, it will go to the US servers. That's how it will need, you need to design your services. And that is the question that when you start developing your application from a day one, you should know whether I'm making an application where the users will come only from the India or outside the India as well, or outside the US as well. Like I'm work, currently working on one of the application where users will only come to the, from the Canada location, nothing else. So in that case, entire architecture will be changed. Okay. okay and when you are saying when you are saying i want to make my application accessible outside from india in that case your charges will be very very high so that's the reason multiple clients always says make my application very very highly scalable very very highly available this is one one of two i would say two points <coughs> two understand one point is highly available highly scalable what does it mean when i say highly available that means if my entire india data center or my entire india region is going down then also my users should not get impacted in that case, you will need to move all your traffic to the US servers. Although there will be latency, but latency is good instead of not serving any request. That's how you understand, right? If my application is not working, that's a huge loss to me. But if I'm uh, my application is working a little slow, that is completely fine for me. There will be very, very less chances until we are not in the situation of Russia and Ukraine, that your entire India data center or US data center shut down. But if situations arise like this war or any flood or anything, all the things are impacted on the country level, then you can't do anything on that, that case. Uh, so you said uh, maybe uh, one region is go down as for yeah. example you said about ukraine so if uh, i have maybe i have uh, a service in india actually mm -hmm. so maybe india is down so amazon will keep store my data data so if is down uh, can i recover from their end no that depends actually let's suppose real time example there is a location in uh, where amazon was storing results or your records basically. What happened now, Russia just uh, got a missile and they trigger a missile on that location. That entire data center is now down. So for where uh, Microsoft or any cloud vendor, where they will store the results, basically they have destroyed all their data centers itself. In that case, you are not storing the data. But the point is, when you are making your application highly scalable or highly available, you will design your application in a way like if I am today working with one of the Ukraine data center, but with the click of, with the single click, I can move to the US data centers. With the, uh, within few clicks, I can move to the US servers. <laughs> Now you said uh, maybe one region is down data. Uh, I can, um, I can up my data from another region. <coughs> That's for example, yeah. Ukraine, for example, Ukraine is down right now. Yeah, so right. what's happening the Ukraine user right now? This is right my question. Right now, if like if 
that application is being designed for single region the applications are impacted not working but oh. if designs were like this like if i have to move to another location it is not very easy that i am what i am saying it is not very very easy you just click on it and your all data will be transferred not like that because you when you are working on the application there will be existing data as well right there will right. be so many open sessions as well so when you are designing your application every small part needs to design in a way that is highly available right like if you are working with one of the design where you, you are using sps service sns service cloudwatch lambda functions let's just design in a way so that you can understand this is let's suppose you are this is your project where you are using one lambda service i hope everyone said about lambda and ec2 okay many aws services you can and the main part is your database let's suppose you are using dynamo db for sql server or mysql any of it you are using so in that case suppose you make your application at the time of designing the application you make your application just open to single availability or single region single region now all of your services are dependent on the ukraine data centers and you are working very good from last 5 years there was nothing situation like war and nothing was happening but suddenly russia attack on the ukraine in that case what happened S slow and steady entire three data centers are down now aws claims i have three data centers in ukraine okay one by one all data centers are going down due to electricity issue due to internet stops their services or due to non availability of people okay entire data centers are down now in that case what will happen do you think that you can just migrate all your all of your existing workload to the new location no it is not possible if you didn't think that design in the very beginning every service you are designing that piece of code let's suppose you are running lambda that piece of code that ec2 machine that my sql data you need to migrate to another region as well and that will take some time if you are not prepared for this then how can you write all of the scripts testing script in very shorter period of time you can't no. actually it's not possible actually yeah then that's a the point when client says i want to go with the highly scalable or highly available architecture then at least cost will be increased by double at least when i say double when you are making your application available to multiple regions costing will be double and also you will do the failover testing whenever i say failover testing that means you will create a situation like this while doing the testing that i just assume the country is on the war where i am hosting all of the applications the country is on the war entire data center is not working what you will do you will release your code you will quickly do backup of your databases to another regions it will be very very quick 15 to 20 minutes business can <clears throat> i would say business can bear the one hour loss two hour loss but they can't just uh, keep down their service for longer number of hours <coughs> how it works i hope you got the concept now 
so what is the best practice actually uh, what are in industry practice you said people are getting two copy or actually uh, they are getting high value solution or um, you said just it's pre good pre practicing is like this or uh, what is the actually the it is it, it is uh, let me just giving you very uh, rough example i'm sharing with you let's suppose you are living in us okay uh, and the house cost i'm just house cost i'm taking the house cost is 500000 for one time payment for one house there is cost of 500000 and you have 10 hundred thousand in your pocket okay you have a situation like you can buy two homes if one goes is one home is going uh, you can say not working i would say not working but you are not and by anyhow you are not able to live in that area let's suppose there is some curfew or situations like this in that case you can move to the second home but the point is for just only this purpose that one day there will be a challenge and I can I should have the backup. So to have the backup of that service, you have to pay extra amount. And point is, if client is capable enough, you are working with very, very high profile banking applications, Facebook applications like Google or any good application where they can't bear the one minute of down time even in that case always go with the highly available architecture but when you are working with small applications where the client is very critical about the cost also they will always see that please do not use highly available architecture that is the point what is actually biggest, business right? it is always it is always to have multiple regions design always suggest but if client is saying i am okay with single region design in that case you can just go with the single design the point is aws says it will be 99.9 .9 for the one region but aws says in case of multiple region it would be this so that's how you can see yeah, Amazon, Amazon service also goes down. Yeah, sometimes they also down, right? Sorry, they have also said, down time. I said AWS also has down time sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. there will be a time when AWS services are also down. But yeah. that's the point again. If you are working on an application, let's suppose you are working on an application and that application might go down for 15 20 minutes let's suppose just take the example of one of the online tool where i'm doing the transformation like uh, i'm converting the jpeg image to png simple website in that case if my website is not working for 30 minutes or let's suppose 45 minutes business says i am okay with it i am okay with it okay in that case you can go with this single design but if business is saying no 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 in either case my application should not go down in that case you should go for the highly available but my point is if you are spending your 45 45000 per month on one application for lambda or deploying or anything then if you are making your application highly available the cost would be 85000 dollar now the question comes to you or your client. Are they okay to spend this money, this amount of money, or they can lose, they can bear the loss of four hundred dollars for two hours? If they are saying we are okay for losing four hundred dollars for two hours, then go for it. But if client is saying, let's make today this uh, single design application, and after two years I want to go with it then it will be a development cost maintenance cost it is not easy to go with the highly available architecture once you design the architecture in a single available single region basically got it thank you got it i hope it is clear now yes thank you this is everyone is now 
client is super smart now that is super smart they just learn basics of cloud computing and comes with no my architecture is not highly available not scalable but when you go with the scalable when you go for the automation when you are going for the highly available architecture they will be highly cost against it right so that when that point comes they say no no i also need this design in this same cost how can this is possible because you are leveraging the resources from aws aws will book their resources for you in case of emergency aws will never say to you that i don't have the resources <coughs> available for you right so in that case you need to pay extra to aws google cloud or which vendor you are working on coming back to the uh, very very basic again cloud computing is defined as storing and accessing data and computing services over the internet it is just a wrapper it is just a wrapper they are delivering over the internet you can go to this okay this is console this is console guys and if you see the free services i have already told you this is ec2 this is s3 this is this is 5 gb of standard storage every month 5 gb of storage you can use like this amazon rds when i say rds it is relational database system where you can create mysql postgresql mariadb or microsoft sql server machines over the few clicks only okay so um if, if i have a question please yeah sure um what i want is i'm sorry i'm getting a lot of echo is everyone else is getting the echo oh is is really out here okay anyway out <coughs> are you hear me now a little better okay what i'm trying to say is that i want to find out when you say is it is uh, 350 hours free so what if you're using resources like NAT or NAT I'm or uh, I'm not able you to me? You well. yeah. oh sorry we'll you can leave the, yeah. you, you can leave your question in chat yeah mark you can leave your question in chat I hope till now no confusions. Any questions anybody have? Dev, Sachi, Joy, Karthik, Mark, Sachin, Sonal. Any questions? Feel free to discuss this. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. That's great. So coming back to this. AWS or cloud computing model says these are the models available we have. So one is infrastructure as a service. When I say infrastructure as a service, so everything like I said before coming to cloud computing, we were working with hardware vendors, procuring a machine, then installing softwares, then we were doing a lot of things, right? But nowadays, if you are looking for one machine, any configuration you can just easily go to aws console and create a machine so everything comes under the infrastructure as a service when you are looking for infrastructure type of things when you are looking for computing service when you are looking for storage service it comes under the category of infrastructure as a service then we have a platform as a service when i say platform that means apart from giving the infrastructure, they are also giving you software installed on it, like operating system, IAS, SQL Server, lot of things they are already giving to you in platform as a service. But what will happen in the case of platform as a service, they always use infrastructure as a service in behind of platform as a service. So, or you can also say if you are using platform as a service, you are ultimately using infrastructure as a service in the background. Why? 
because their platform as a service is built on infrastructure as a service when i say infrastructure is a service so you can say ec2 machine is the best example ec2 instance okay like this lambda but lambda is more preferred uh, this, yeah, uh, I platform as a service yeah please so uh, if you say infrastructure as service uh, uh, so is it uh, like providing the machine and we will install all our software in that is it like if you go with this image i can show you one image yeah. so that you can this is very very basic image available this because anyway, there is a lot of can... confusion in this uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, infrastructure service or uh, platform yeah it, just go with this example i will make this clear okay very easy to understand just go with this image uh, let me just uh, get a copy it on the local so that we can zoom in let's go Where is the image? Let me see. Where is the image? Let's go. Let's try to open this image. Is alone, not alone. You need to understand that. Just open the URL itself. Just understand with this example. <coughs> this this image. See, there are three examples. One is infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and the software as a service. When I say infrastructure as a service. that means that there are three things in the application when let's take the very basic <coughs> example with the web application suppose you are maintaining one of the web application over the any cloud google cloud aws or azure what will happen virtualization is a base they are giving to you because when you are creating a ec2 machine on any server they will be creating the layer basically ec2 instance basis on the virtualization technology they are giving you servers they are giving the storage networking all these things they are giving to you when they are giving this thing to you that means it comes under the category of infrastructure as a service just understand this example this is a blue color that you are holding these things you are holding in case of infrastructure as a service you are responsible for application data runtime middleware operating system you understand this right infrastructure as operating system you are doing the handling right you are doing patching maintenance runtime runtime i would say installing the dotnet framework jdk right you are installing it to run your application that things you are doing and whenever you are doing these things and you are only buying these things from aws it is called infrastructure as a service very easy but when you are working on the on prem everything is done by you networking storage server they will be guy from the server management they will be guy from the storage management they will be networking guy operate operating system installation will be done by your company only middleware runtime everything you are doing that is on prem when i say infrastructure you are only buying computer from aws that's how you understand but in the platform as a service they will be giving <coughs> runtime they will be giving operating system they will be giving middleware 
only thing is application development or data that will be your responsibility that will be your responsibility and aws is focusing more on this area platform as a service because they want to reduce this part to their vendors aws is earning more on this part platform as a service got it or any questions uh, uh, this clear it what is software as a service no i i'm looking for software as a service i mean i as far i know they have only uh, amazon web service so uh, they have only linux uh, they have them uh, any, anything more yes multiple frameworks like if you work with google drive okay google drive is a software for you right but mm -hmm. ultimately what google drive is doing internally they are storing all of the data over the cloud so that service you can consider as a software as a service like third second example is aws google cloud all these services what they are doing to you software as a service during the software usage you are using their services simple thing ultimately no. yeah i am asking about what service uh, what is the software example for amazon aws actually uh, amazon web service they yeah. have any software there are many many services if i go with the i drive or google drive these are the example of software as a service gmail is a service a service but example this, software this as a service google. example so no, i am this is for google i am asking for aws which service available for aws no. a for aws you can see uh, it is not divided like this whatever services are being developed on aws infrastructure that you can say aws uh, software as a service but there is no specific term uh, related to the aws only this will be a mix to all the cloud vendors software as a service got it got it got it there is no definition like this what are the types available in software as a service through aws not like this there can be a combination there can be a a single cloud vendor that is what you need to understand here so my point is in there is one point infrastructure as a service cloud delivery model second is platform as a service third is a software exit as a service you can see examples github google docs slack adobe creative cloud these are the example which are developed using the cloud frameworks so everything is done by the cloud vendors not anything you are doing on that because if you go with the microsoft 360 uh, office everything they are doing they have created a application they are storing the data you have don't have any controls on their data right so you can just see the emails you are creating the documents you are sharing the document with your colleagues but you can't see the application code you can't see the data actually that comes the category of software as a service then we have the cloud environment which is public cloud private cloud and hybrid cloud very very easy which where we are working like aws google cloud can any one of you let me know what is uh, what is the type of aws cloud is it private is it public they have private public both how uh, because um, they are using their um, aws uh, their uh, service also they are giving uh, rent or they are giving a service to users so is their private cloud also giving public cloud okay but most of the time your answer should be it is a aws is a public cloud not private when you say they are also using their services for internal purpose let's suppose for amazon.com or alexa or any services they are using in that is they are using the just a aws services aws is just a another vendor for them for aws amazon web services it is a public cloud they are delivering most of the service but when this comes to amazon amazon is the one of the client for aws 
but your answer should be AWS is the public cloud. So when I say public cloud, what they are doing internally? Can anybody know me? Uh, let me know what is the concept of virtualization? Super easy. This is virtualization. What they are doing? Virtualization. Let's suppose through the virtualization, what I'm doing, I have this much of RAM. Let's suppose I have 500 TB of RAM. and 1000 TB of hard disk. This is your virtual machine. This is your actual boot machine, physical machine through virtualization technology. What they are doing, if you say AWS, please give me two GB of instance of RAM. and 100 TB of hard disk. In that case, what AWS will do, they will cut out this portion from the main physical server and give it to you. They will remain with the storage, whatever you are deducting from this. So they will be having 498 GB of RAM, 900 TB of hard disk. If another vendor is saying I need same machine, they will cut out it out from the virtualization. Okay, they will also give the same machine to you. Right? That's how they are working internally through the virtualization. Okay, my point, my point was didn't phone the mute is. Mr. Shujan, can you mute yourself? Yeah, I'm just mm -hmm. muting it. Yeah. If you go by the uh, public cloud, ultimately what they are doing, you are working on one machine. Let's suppose this is you. This is another company. This is another company. This is another company. This is another company. Like now what you are doing through the virtualization, you are working with this another user is working with this ultimately this is one one computer one physical machine but sometimes what happens let's take the example of u.s military u.s military rule says we can't work with the model where multiple vendors are working on same physical machine this is against the security of nation they can't store the data on the public servers so in that case aws is no usage for the government agencies most of the time it was happening but now if you go with go with the aws documentation aws is giving opportunities to government agencies as well or military agencies as well so that they can store their data on the servers where they are only usage by the government agencies only. Private vendors can't use that services. They have huge limitations, huge securities for that. And the charge rate is also high. But my point is, if somebody asking you a question, AWS is which type of the cloud? your answer will be public because you are sharing the infrastructure. AWS is giving that services on rent. How much you needed that, that is what you need to tell them. They will be charging basis on that. So AWS is the public cloud. Okay. Coming back to private, when I say private, it is a private server that this, this one you can say it's my private. Let's suppose I'm working with IBM. 
IBM has more than 10,000 of projects and out of 10,000, they need cloud computing in 1,000 projects. In that case, they can do one thing. They can hire, they can acquire a machine, huge machine and give the options to only IBM users to use the cloud computing concepts or create machines, infrastructure. Only IBM users can do that. So that will be private cloud to IBM. That will be private cloud to the IBM. So the private cloud refer to cloud services that are owned and managed by the organization that use them and available only to organization employees and customers. Got it guys? Third is hybrid cloud. When I say hybrid, it is a mix. Sometimes requirement says you can host your application on public infrastructure, but your database should be private only. Due to some compliance requirement, you should have some this type of requirement. In that case, what you will do? You will create a hybrid cloud application. Hybrid cloud means there can be a usage of private cloud. There can be a usage of public cloud. Got it? And when I say multi-cloud, this model is very trending nowadays, very super trendy because now what is happening in the industry, people don't want to go with this single point of failure any any point of time. But if you're going with AWS, that you can say your entire application, entire infrastructure is dependent on the AWS only. So big CTOs names are not in the favor of going with only one client vendor. What will happen? They will be using a couple of services from AWS, couple of services they want to acquire with Google Cloud, couple of services they are using from the Azure. In that case, one question comes, how to hire multiple peoples with different skill set? This is the one, one of the challenge. But one of the beauty companies are getting, they are not dependent on single soul. They are not dependent on, on AWS only. They are not dependent on Azure. And trust me, now that is what is happening, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, they are giving a lot of discounts to their customer to retain with them. Let's say one service they are charging as a $15,000 for three months, uh, is, they will be giving a discount to you. Yeah, Karthik. So I heard that Google is uh, uh, opening the data center in Pune. Yeah, right. Okay. So that means uh, there will be more opportunities in uh, GCP as well, right? Yes, my point was in the last session, I told you that at uh, that time, right? So they are opening a data center in Pune. They are opening a data center in multiple places. But if you go with AWS uh, stability, that will no, not go in next couple of years. Google is doing very, very well in the market. Their part is suddenly increasing in the market because they are opening data centers they are focus, focusing more like like the time you remember Satya Nadella joined the Microsoft Azure was nothing at that time right but after that in the Azure lot of demands demand was coming lot of demand after Satya joined because they converted all of the Microsoft structure into the I would say uh, free one. Free one means they have developed, they have removed the concept of licensing from .NET framework and going back to the community model. And that is what Google is doing now. They are giving very good services because you can understand how big uh, Google is in terms of data science as well. They have the huge list of servers, right? So their services are very, very good. But the point is, if I go with the stability and number of services, AWS is comparing with the Google Cloud. Google Cloud is uh, far behind as of now. Yeah, that is my point. Ritesh, uh, yeah. in multi-cloud environment, how 
and the services communicate with each other so when you say multiple cloud these are just the computers let's say today i am saying i am working with two data centers okay this is one data center in the same data center i have at a different location this is your data center you are cutting out two machines one is this ec2 machine for this machine okay this is machine a okay this has a ip 12934 dot this dot this is this let's suppose okay and this is second machine this has ip like 10 87 Two dot three. This is your IP. So how does it matter for you? You are working on the two data centers. You will. You are a developer, right? You need this infrastructure, this IP, and this is this is the IP. And to interact with, you will be having two keys basically, two infrastructures that you need a access on the this machine like this. You can consider as a AWS one. Okay. or you can consider p this is for google in that case what will happen you need a key to interact with aws then you will store your data to machine 1 then you will interact with aws using your credentials and then you will pass the data to second server okay. so just treat this as a machine irrespective of aws forget about the cloud vendor there might be a point in the industry the you are working with 10 cloud vendors or 10 teams only thing your fundamentals will remain same that's how you as of now you work with the current infrastructure if it is your on premises infrastructure then also you need to work with the ip of system right when it is going to the aws or google then also you need to interact in the same way nothing will change for you okay no just don't confuse that when you are working with the cloud vendor there will be lot of challenges no just keep you are working on a different machine one machine is residing at different place one machine is residing at different place that's it does it answer your question yes sanjay so it is like low. this sachin sachin here yeah sachin please yeah. so it means uh, there is no uh, like uh, means we can integrate all the clouds uh, with uh, any of the in the architecture we can uh, use aws google and all other azure also right there is no yes. confusion like for the integration and directional bi directional data or anything right no no there will be a huge directions let's suppose today my organization is uh, very good be very good working with the aws only mm -hmm. most of the applications we are working with the aws 95% applications but uh, but whenever a project comes into the queue for the microsoft related projects when i say mm -hmm. microsoft one application we are developing on the dotnet core plus react in that case we always always prefer to go with azure mm -hmm. got it but if your company is saying you are working on a application let's suppose take the example of microservices mm -hmm. microservices give you that flexibility go with any technology go with any technology any stack but you are only responsible for this module if you are working with that module you can apply any service you can choose best out of it but if you are working on a enterprise level things there will be a huge restrictions by leadership that you should should go on, only go with the aws only but that trend is gradually changing that is what i am saying when you go with the microservices architecture you can convince your architect you can convince your enterprise architect to cto that this is the advantage if we go with this number of services or might be google is cloud google mm -hmm. cloud is best in that case you need to give certain good points that if you are going for this service 
that's what mm -hmm. i'm thinking this is the advantage otherwise no will nobody will accept you are introducing three services from google three services from azure three services from aws and you are going uh, one teacher explained me that you should always go with the, this architecture because you are not creating a single dependency on any source they will say sorry this is this is very bad design okay but you need to throw your design come up with a point that this is the service i want to use this service let's say one of the example i want to use one of the uh, service where google is performing excellent mm -hmm. like data lake aws is also perfect in that area but aws is uh, azure is little less on that then you can say this is the place i want to go with aws or google cloud because they have the mastery on it got it yeah thanks. but not at, not each and service you can't can't say ki i will go with it thanks and when you are designing a architecture this is very very tough task guys when you are designing architecture that means you have to convince enterprise architect you have to convince your client you have to convince your cto you have to convince even your developers yeah developers will ask also ask the questions qas will also ask the questions so whenever you are developing something architect is very mainly main thing that you need to create and think around 360 corners of the all the services basically so my question is how i know as for example amazon has uh, sorry aws has s3 service but i don't i don't know about google i don't know about azure so how i give the solution because i am solution architect okay. so how can i give them solution uh, your question. name i am not i am joy joy okay so answer is nobody will tell you that thing that is the thing that will come your way by only learning from your designs because whenever i go with my designs let's suppose i am today working on one of the design i go to my uh, enterprise architect i do that research in front of me if i am going with s3 instead of uh, aws blob store uh, azure blob storage what yep. questions they can ask just open your ma uh, mind and throw it randomly what are the other options i have can i go to this can i go to this and list this point with the pros and cons and trust me today you are learning aws that is that's the best thing you are doing because aws is doing very well in the market after 2 years there might be a time google cloud is doing the best in that case you should not restrict your career to only to aws because now market is saying we only require aws guys after 2 years trust me the this model will change they will say we need a cloud developer because all services are same almost same they are just creating a wrapper in a different way aws is giving different option uh, google is giving different option but ultimately what they what you are doing you are doing the same activity you are doing on the on prem but now you are doing all the activities you are using their console so you just need to learn few concept that's it that is got it yeah yeah thank so you the answer is there is no direct answer for it whenever you are designing like i am working on one of the design i have three options in my mind but think about if somebody is asking you uh, you don't have the option to go with the azure what will be your choice you don't have the option to go with either with aws or azure what will be your option you don't have the options to go with these three clouds what you will do suppose you are working on working with china clients they have the huge limitation you know they can only work with the alibaba they have their cloud vendor which is very very popular in the china china market they can only work with that client 
that cloud vendor they have the huge restrictions on the azure aws i am not denying they have the access to few of the services of azure few of the services of aws but the point is if you are working with enterprise application and today you see lot of limitation in your design definitely nobody wants to go with that part right so that's the point uh, when you were working with the multiple geographic locations disaster recovery points backup points you will see lot of things coming into your plate that's how you will learn and this questions will not come like if i am not expert with s3 and how should i learn about the azure blobs in that case you have the google right go and type aws s3 versus azure blob and try to compare these two services what you are getting extra in azure blob and try to match that thing with your requirement it says this is good this is the host this is the point then calculate or do some research on this point does it really matter for you to go with a, uh, azure cloud if it is making more sense to you answer would be azure sense azure cloud go with it but just at least prove that points any questions guys any questions no requesting do okay. i'm not boring you right <laughs> no 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 <laughs> all are silent nobody is coming on the video except koza uh, no this where uh... uh catching your points okay but your confidence looks like a bit low uh, no it is okay my point is <clears> that <throat> this this is not the course i don't to be frank i really don't like where i'm i'm just speaking in all of the class okay i don't like that part that is my point if i am working with any aws service s3 i will give you at least 40 questions on aws s3 that will help you on the interviews part that will help you on the uh, certifications part i will give you different scenarios on that i showed you that list right this is for the iem i am working on the, this note will be shared in every classes okay so let me show you one thing this is the assignment list when i am saying please create a just take the example of any i am not uh, in favor of any but i am saying just take this example create git action workflow to create deploy aws lambda function so this entire activity will three, take 3 to 4 days for you if you are spending 3 to 4 days that is what i am selling into the market you can do the course from anywhere you can learn from google you can do the self learning you can do you can do a payment of 5 dollar and get the uh, udemy courses very very easily available the point is they are not giving enough knowledge on the technical part on the practical part when i say you you have to work on the git action workflow you need to work on it you will come up with different ideas that ritesh this is a design in my design in my thought i have done a research on it these are the pros and cons i will be your enterprise architect i will be your architect and listen your points and then i will ask questions on it if that questions is satisfactory answers is uh, satisfactory to me 
I will give, I'll say go, go with this design and implement it. It will create your knowledge. It will give you opportunity to review designs with me. Okay. And then third point is you are doing it by your own. That will add a lot of experience in your portfolio. Like this, I have more than 100 assignments I can give to you. More than 100 assignments. That will be real assignment where you will learn. Yeah. Yeah, I will be sharing this deck with you so that you can understand better. Not each and everything we can do. After two months, if you say, Ritesh, this is not completed, this is not completed, not each and everything we will do because that takes a lot of time. My point is, if you are interested in more in developer part, you have two or three years experience. I would say you go with the technical part, coding part more. I will give you assignments related to developer role. But if you're saying Ritesh, I'm more interested in solution architect, then it doesn't make a lot of sense that you could going with the lot of coding, writing a lot of Lambda function, right? Because this is what you will not do in the actual way, actual role. So if you are more interested in DevOps part, like if you're working with release, build pipelines, continuous integration, development, making a workflows automation, that part you will do the different assignments and everybody assignments will be different. The only thing is it should not be a way that just I'm giving it next day you are coming and this is just uh, give the next topic and I'm done. That should, I, nobody like this style. Basically what will I, I'll expect do the search on it, come up with different options and do and learn something. And also give me something. So is it covered? Okay, go ahead, Suchin. Yeah, please. Go ahead, Suchin. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, uh, acknowledging uh, that it is okay. Yeah, we can. yeah, Joel. So is it uh, covered all uh, examination question like uh, if I want to for uh, certification? Not all of them. But the point is, if you are working with any of the service, like Lambda service, I will suggest you, uh, I have cleared two exams on AWS, how I do my preparation. Resources I'm talking about, one is, do, read, basic of every service. AWS service. This is number one point. Second is go with AWS service FAQ. Okay, when I say FAQ, this is frequently asked questions. Mm -hmm. If you go to AWS and search for EC2, or let me just search for cloud trail and you type frequently ask questions. You will see a lot of questions are given by AWS itself over the their website. You need to go with it. Okay. These are many, many questions. Okay. Go with it. Then go with some sample exams. And so on. And then go for exams. I would say dummy exams. There is a website with the name of Biz Labs that I generally work with. I follow that. This is a good website where you will find a lot of uh, certifications, questions, and answers. And that is very, very, I think, in $15 or $10 only. But the questions are very, very good. 
go with this training library cloud computing amazon and if you are going for the aws solution architect or uh, going for the developer or sysops which whatever you are going with go with that and choose that versions they will be for the associate i found almost 1000 questions and answers that you can do but trust me don't go with the just uh, keep attempting one exam in a day whenever questions come in your way try to learn each and everything around it that way you will learn the concept of aws right okay that's how you need to design but answer to your question in short i will be letting you know a lot of sources and the in the last days we can do some preparations in the exam as well i will help you on that but if you're still looking for more help you can anytime come to my whatsapp you can write a message and help you on that okay thank but you. there is no guarantee i'm giving you that you will clear the exam my last week three of my student at camp and one was fail because he never did anything on the coding part he never did anything on the console part no practice at all no practice at all if you're not making a practice because they will be asking questions very deeply if you are not creating any service over the console or cli or sdk you are not experiencing it there might be a situation when you will be confused between two options. You will see option also A is good and B also looks good to you. Then you will do random choose, right? You will be choosing one random answer. That's where the possibility comes less because you are randomly choosing the answer. Got it. But my point is that just spend two hours on daily to after two months, I will surely say you that you, you, you can crack the AWS exam. Associate, I am talking about, not professional. Professional is a bit high. Yeah, associate is okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> associate is fine. Yeah, associate, you can clear in two or three months of practice only. See this question, you can see. I have this one I have, right? State of the certified solution architect associate. 765 questions, 220 videos as well. Videos your choice, you want to go with or not. But if you go with this test, you can just click on start and there will be a questions. So if you say start please, it will be asking you in a practice mode or no practice mode. When you say practice mode, they will be a giving explanation to you as well. This is a right answer and why. So this is a question. Okay. So like this, you will be getting 70 questions basis on the exam architecture which you are trying to them so this is design post optimization architecture and see until unless you are not done the practical you will see a lot of challenge okay. right right so that is my point and trust me when you go for the professional one i did experience there was many questions like options is four but the question was double in in three paragraphs there was question but the answer was very very quick <laughs> right sometimes they did uh, <laughs> two question also you have to right. select two right among the two right answer this is very difficult yeah they are just making it tough because i was surprised that three paragraph questions and i have only one and a half minute how can i read that and uh, uh, time one but this was super easy <laughs> they, they are playing with our mindsets <laughs> So, people who doesn't uh, 
from last time let me also go to the source of content we are covering Yeah, this will be a course of content that you was asking about. I will forward it to you. You can go through it. But like I said, this is just a course of content. Lifetime also I said that thing when you are doing a training with me, I will never think in one direction that you because apart from these all topics, these are the standard of market for the AWS solution architect. But apart from these, I can deliver a lot of extra topic to you. Last time also I added Docker, Kubernetes, AWS, EKS, how you will deploy your application microservices application on the AWS cloud. Okay. So Docker Kubernetes, we are covering cloud watch, cloud formation, and this is the beauty nowadays, cloud formation and Terraform. They are huge demand. They are into huge demand. So when you learn cloud formation, you are at the very good pace basically. So you will also learn about Terraforms. I will let you know a few of the lectures on that as well. If you're working on the developer tools, code commit, code deploy, this is a very, very useful tools. AWS Lambda, Beanstack, Simple Queue Service, Simple Notification Service, Route 53, low Elastic Load Balancing, how to make VPC, Route Tables, Internet Gateways, Subnets, Private Subnet. Everything will be covered with, with example. Not like this. If I am saying you just we can apply uh, encryption on the S3 in two ways. One is uh, server side encryption, and second is client side encryption. So that is something that we will be covering with practical, so that you can see after two months that I done this part encryption. I have used it. Not like that. Others like people are coming in the interviews. They have lot of theoretical knowledge. But when, when I ask them a few questions, how to decrypt the file, they have, don't have any information around it because they have just gone through a couple of courses and coming with the confidence I know about AWS. So that's what people are doing. So I would not suggest go with it. Learn one topic in a day, but do research on that so that you can speak with all the points, all the factors. Any questions you have? Uh, Ritesh, this course will take how much time? Um, this will take probably three months of time with assignments. Two at half months generally we consider, but it will take three months of time. All together? Sorry? The pricing, what's what's the cost and everything? Yeah, for pricing, you can talk to Amit. Uh, I mentioned his number. Yeah, you can talk on this number. Uh, can you send this uh, course content yes, yes. over? Let me send it to you, this, and also the assignment, so that you can go through in detail. And trust me, you can compare this part with any of the technology vendor who is giving the training. 
nobody can give you that part of content my point is i will only do only do basics of aws then i will directly jump to the assignments and projects that way you will learn because you are doing the practical course we will be covering in next few few sessions only like we will be completing this by mid of april course will be completed but after that i will be only giving assignments to you that you need to complete on daily basis on the weekend basis and this course we are designing in a way so that we can work on saturday and sunday and we will i will also schedule one class wednesday 9 pm to 10 pm ist or that time we can change mutually as well for the questions because if i am giving one or two assignments over the weekend and till the till the next weekend you are waiting for some inputs or something in that case we can meet on the wednesday as well to clear your questions or queries so that you can utilize two more other days right that we are going to do but uh, hi yeah so, but the problem is the timing another day is a uh, work day is a week day uh, our time is not match uh, we no week day week day is we will be creating a group for it right whatsapp group yes. so okay. you can say this this matching is this time is not working for me might mm. be you don't have any confusion for your work what i am giving to you okay might okay. be uh somebody like they is uh, making confusion or somebody has another confusion on the project or the assignments they have aligned to so okay. they can meet independently so i will not be recorded that session that will be on only for the assignments part But my okay. point is if i am not connecting with you five days because doing the course over the weekend is tough for me because when you are learning something you should be very very connected with all the things on a daily basis okay i got it. i will be covering five to six topics in one mm. weekend but you also okay. need time to do right you will be yes. following the recordings you will be seeing all these things many times okay this is what happens that i can do one thing in uh, four minutes but the same time you are doing that thing and it took four days it happens because I, when i was doing the same thing for the first time it took took four days of me as well right but now i have the experience i can i am utilizing that skill that is what you need to do by doing the practice you will be learning all these things and i will motivate you i will strongly advise you after learning just one spending one month of time with me i will modify your cv and then you can open for the market go for the interviews start giving the interviews you will learn lot from the interviews when they are asking questions you will be learning lot of things also i will be scheduling a mock up calls with you like i am saying uh, this i am giving one project to you and from that project i will be starting asking questions what are the questions on lambda what is lambda layer what will happen if lambda is going down what will happen if our data center is going down what will be the cost how you evaluated the cost what will happen if one of the api is being hosted on your server and one attacker did a ddos attack on your website how you will apply a mechanism on your api that only 2000 request are being served in one minute after that all api will be rejected i am my point is just don't go with the basic basic things nobody is expecting a very basic thing in, in, in the industry they will not i ask you how to create a simple lambda function is to they will be giving a situation you are working on application where you need to retain database out of uh, picture nobody can uh, log in into the database but the only web server can interact with that server the database server you need to design that vpc security groups routing tables that's what where your need will be otherwise creating a lambda function is super easy right you already know you will find 
multiple videos over the YouTube. Yeah, any questions or we can uh, done for the day for today? I will be sharing this tax with you. And tomorrow we can wait same time, 6 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Ritesh. Sure. Welcome, buddy. Any questions, you can also speak to me personally. If you have any questions, just uh, take number of me from Amit or you can directly talk to me. No worries. No questions, Sachin. Dev. Nothing from myself. I'm good. Thanks. Okay. Karthik, Sonal. No questions. No, it is. Take care, guys. Let's talk tomorrow. Yeah, sure, sure. Bye.